Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast with your host, Lorna Poole, sharing the secrets to creating wealth, investing, and that all-important money mindset. To find out more and accelerate your journey to financial freedom, head on over to www.lornapool.com to get started. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Financial Freedom Podcast. Would you love to learn how to scale your business with virtual assistance? assistance? Well, my guest expert today, Laura Briggs, is a former teacher turned entrepreneur, freelance writer, speaker, and author. Laura, great to have you here. Thank you for having me. VAs, does it really help your business? Yes, you need to have a VA once you reach the point of being close to fully booked. And when you start to feel overwhelmed on your own, a VA can really help you scale. And I think that's a great thing to mention the way you said, you know, when you're starting to feel overwhelmed and fully booked, because I remember when I was starting off, um, I remember the coach I worked with really pushed a VA before I really needed a VA. Yes. And sometimes that will happen as a way to kind of protect you from yourself when somebody else recommends it. Because what most people do is they wait way too long to hire a VA. And so by the time they're ready to hire one, they're so in the weeds because they should have done it three or four months ago. And then they end up rushing through that process of hiring a virtual assistant. And that's where you can make mistakes and where a lot of people's voice their frustrations about hiring a VA. So if you take it slow and steady and start with a really small project with a VA, you have time to see how it works for you to get to know the person and to build some communication and guidelines. And then you'll feel much more comfortable when you outsource other tasks. Yeah, I'd like to take this in, in two steps. One about picking your VA and the second is about scaling. So VAs, right? I've had one or two more than that. Um, and, you know, I've, I've found myself in different situations with different VAs. So, you know, how do you source a really solid VA or do you have different VAs per, for specific areas? Um, you know, there's so many out there, but not all of them are, um, some of them are brilliant and some of them are learning off you. Absolutely. So the first thing to consider is that the first person you hire is not the person you have to stick with. It's okay to hire somebody who seemed to check off all the right boxes and be the right fit and then discover in practice that it doesn't work for whatever reason. Your personalities clash, the communication doesn't work. That's okay. That's another big reason why you want to start small. The best way to find a virtual assistant is through referral by asking your network of other entrepreneurs, does anyone know a good VA who does insert XYZ? And you brought up another really good point there, which is that a lot of people will try to hire one VA to do 15 different tasks. Mm -hmm. And even as entrepreneurs, we're not outstanding at 15 different tasks. We're probably really good at four or five and the rest are not in our zone of genius. So when you're choosing tasks, you want to focus on picking a VA who has expertise in most of the areas that are most important to you. So I'm sure you have a giant list of things you could outsource. We're not going to give all those tasks to the same VA. We're going to start with whatever your biggest priority is. Say it's social media management. Try to find a VA who has expertise in that area. Maybe they have some of those other skills you're looking for, or maybe that has to come from a different VA hire. But that's a big mistake to avoid is thinking there's this magical unicorn VA out there who does everything for you. Yeah, because, um, you know, websites very different to, you know, marketing and yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Um, what about, uh, costs? You will find costs all over the board. I would say most VAs, um, you know, even with currency differentiations, you're going to find starting in the 18 to 25 per hour range for beginners, people who have more advanced expertise or use software like Infusionsoft or something where they've been certified in that program or are a project manager type of VA, they will be more expensive. So what's important is to think about what 
lower level tasks can you take off of your plate? You know, as an entrepreneur, you shouldn't be doing something that you can pay someone else 18 or 25 an hour to do. You should be focused on the 100 an hour, 250 an hour, 500 an hour tasks. So uh, make sure that- Let's talk about that because that's part of scaling. And this is where a lot of business owners go wrong. Mm -hmm. They spend too much of their time on the- um, low tasks and they're not spending the money, they're not spending their time on the tasks that'll bring in the income. Yes. So the easy way to identify the difference between these types of tasks is to track yourself for a week. See what tasks you do in your business. Just it can be, you know, you can be as specific as you want or you can be general, admin time, email, etc. Get an idea of what you're spending your time on and then go through that one at a time and ask, would a CEO do this? Would a CEO also manage the social media of their company or also manage their own travel arrangements and calendar? Probably not. So that will help you get into that mindset of seeing where it's a wise investment to hire a VA to help you with something that you shouldn't be doing that you don't enjoy doing or that is not bringing you in, you know, significant money or room for growth within your business. I would you recommend Laura that my business should be at a certain income or making a certain profit before I should bring on a VA? I don't know that there's a certain number that's magical, but I will say that when you hit the point of feeling burned out at the end of the week or feeling like you're not able to keep up with your own tasks on a day-to-day -day basis, that is the first sign that you need to have a VA in place, even if it's just for a couple of hours a week for you to get some experience with them and scale up. I definitely would say that if you're a new business owner, wait until you have consistent revenue for at least a couple of months where you can reasonably predict that there will be some money coming in in the future yeah now scaling right um bringing my business forward bringing it from earning five thousand a month to ten thousand a month twenty thousand a month what am i what am i putting in place to do that with a va I think with a VA, you're looking for someone who's going to free up your actual time and also your mental energy. So we're looking for things that are not in your zone of genius. I'm a writer. So that means the most valuable tasks that I do in my business are sales calls with clients and actually writing their content. Every other aspect of what I do, research, invoicing, sending out marketing emails or posting on my blog, that is not where I'm necessarily getting business. That's not my zone of genius. So I choose to rely on my VAs to help me accomplish those other things so that I can scale. You need to protect your time and your energy like a CEO in order to be able to grow your business. You know, I love that you shared about uh, protecting your time and energy and freeing up your time and your mental space because when you're in the doing, you're not in the creating and you're not in the, um, you know, you're not putting your time. And, and as you say, what are you good at? Like, what can you do in like 10, you know, 10 minutes where so, like for me, writing is not my strength. It takes me forever and it might take you two minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And you have to know yourself, right? That, and that is the best way to find someone else who can help you because that's another mistake a lot of business owners make. They say, well, if I could just clone me and I could get another person who's like me, no, we're not looking for that, right? We're looking for the person who has the skill sets that you don't. We're looking for the person who can step in and do those things faster than you. So I'm sure if I, I've sat down and tried it, I can make social media images. I can make graphics for my website. I'm not good at it. I don't like it. And it takes me about three times longer than it would take my virtual assistant, who's a graphic design expert. So why spend my time doing that? It's not even something that I enjoy. It has to be done. But oftentimes, the things that we're not good at or that we don't enjoy doing, someone else really does, that is their zone of genius, right? So allowing them to do it often means that it won't take as long. So if you go in with the expectation of, well, this takes me three hours, it might only take your VA one hour. So that then you can start to see that ROI from, well, this is a great reason for me not to do this particular task. This person does it better and faster and enjoys doing it. And what about trusting your VA with the bigger stuff like marketing, um, sending emails for a sales campaign? Um, you know, their voice is not your voice. 
This is very true. So you never want to start off with those sorts of tasks. And it might be the case that you hire an amazing VA who's wonderful with research, but just isn't the right person to be moved into that bigger role of doing some of your marketing. That might be a separate VA or a marketing consultant or somebody else altogether, right? So um, I like to start small. I like to see where my VAs enjoy working with me and what they enjoy doing and give them the opportunity to potentially grow into those other roles. Um, But you do it slowly. You give them test projects with very clear expectations, guidelines, and deadlines. And then you can see, okay, I tried this person at that task. They weren't really what I was looking for. Now I know I can go and hire somebody else. And what about checking in or do you meet with them or is it all just by email, you know, um, having a good relationship with your VA can really help or hinder. Yes, it can. And you will find people who have different personalities and you'll want to know what you prefer when hiring someone. So don't look at just the tasks, look for the personality. How do they communicate? I prefer to hire self-managed VAs. I don't need to do same here. I don't need to have regular team meetings where I'm trying to coordinate across six time zones. Just, can you do this? I don't care what time you do it as long as you meet the deadline. Other people want that ongoing check-in. So you want to know that when you hire a person and try to figure out what type of personality they are. I think a lot of problems between clients and VAs can be fixed by having really good instructions um, and having that open communication. But knowing at the outset, you know, if you're the, if you're interviewing a VA who says, yes, I want to check in with you every day over Skype or a Zoom call, and you're thinking, wow, that sounds really disruptive and not a good way for me to stay on track and productive, don't hire that person. They're just not the fit for you. Mm, I, I agree. Back to scaling, okay? Mm-hmm. Is there typical projects, because most online businesses as such, um, you know, no matter what uh, area you're in, there's a a model that works or certain models. I know, I know there's different ways to make, bring in income and all, but there's, there's a certain sort of layout to an online business. Would you recommend say this business is doing well, it's, it's scaling, it's, it's leveraging. What are the things ideally you would like your VA to be on top of? So your VA should be on top of any repetitive task that is not a good use of your time. Um, So that can be any number of things following up with emails. You know, if you host a podcast, maybe your VA is the person who receives all the information from the podcast guests and stores it for you and, you know, handles updates and cancellations and all of that sort of thing. Um, I like passing on those repetitive tasks because then the VA also knows every month what they're responsible for. They have an ongoing expectation of what to do. Um, Anything that takes you a lot of time but also is not generating direct money is a great task that you can outsource to them. Knowing that zone of genius, you know, what is it that only you can do in your company? You'll start to have this perspective of all the other tasks that you do on a daily or weekly basis that don't really fit in. So like when I go give a keynote presentation, I have to make the outline for that, but I don't need to make the PowerPoint or put the animations and the pictures on the slide or proofread it. That's not a good use of my time. So you can always also take ownership of certain portions of projects and then have the expectation that your VAs will be stepping in for other parts of it. And I think uh, another really important thing to bring up is a lot of entrepreneurs uh, struggle with giving up control. Yes, yes. It's terrible because we've done everything by ourselves up until this point. And it can be very nerve wracking to suddenly say that you're going to pass on these responsibilities to someone else. So start small. Start with something that doesn't have high stakes. This is not your opportunity to outsource something to a VA that is due tomorrow. It's something where we want to think about that project that's been backburnered, where you're not going to be hurt if they aren't able to complete it or complete it properly. But it will be a good chance for you to do the test project and see how you like working together. And this is a financial freedom podcast, right? And someone scaling their business, a lot, not a lot of business owners. Some business owners um, 
from my uh, experience, business owners have different ideas of what financial freedom is to them. Mm-hmm. And um, anyone who who's in this financial freedom field knows that, you know, managing your money and putting um, 10% away each month, what, whatever that is, whatever your uh, plan is, whatever. A lot of business owners um, think, right, my business is going to be my retirement Mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily put in the structures in place to have money being invested to have money compounding for them and um so what like scaling your business how does it help you create financial freedom it should allow you to make more money because you will spend more of your time doing the things that you love and that you're really good at and also allow you more of that opportunity to take time off so that you can come back refreshed and rejuvenated. A VA should be helping you get back time from your schedule every single week, but also giving you more of that time like you mentioned earlier, that big picture, the visioning, the thinking about where the company is going so that you can start to view a VA more as an investment rather than an expense. A VA helps you do things more efficiently and helps you do more things. So it's an investment in the growth of your company that can then allow you to scale to a bigger level where the whole business is not reliant entirely on you or where you can take a day off if you need to as well. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing you said. Um, And I love the way you said, uh, thinking of your uh, VA as an investment and not an expense. But what I really loved what you said is, um, and now it's going to (laughs) admit Is uh oh what did you say? Uh, it was about <laughs> was something about growing it. Uh keep talking and I'll I'll it'll come back to me. But um <laughs> I hate when that happens. It, it was about uh oh. I can't remember, Laura. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I do this all the time. Um But, you know, uh, but here's another topic here. Um, Time off, you know, if you ask any of the experts, they say time is more valuable than money because you can never get your time back. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, most people who dream of financial freedom, what we really want is to be living the life we want to live and do the things we want to do on our own terms. I know what I was going to ask you, actually. So what I was going to ask you, just come back to me, is... You know, if you're creating a successful business, it needs to be able to um, flow whether you're there or not. Mm -hmm. And that can be a big mistake that business owners make in that if you get very sick in the morning, things will collapse without you. Mm -hmm. And um, VAs and having a good structure in your business and putting that plan in place to create financial freedom um, is 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 huge to uh, you know I've seen self-employed people and when they're not there everything falls apart mm-hmm. yes it's it's very true and starting to build up a team of one or more VAs who can help carry on some of these ongoing tasks means that your departure from the business be it for a day because you're sick or for a week when you're going on vacation does not mean that everything stops. It also makes it a lot easier because imagine if you are sick on this particular day, you wake up and you have five meetings on your calendar. More than likely an entrepreneur is going to push through, possibly making themselves more sick in the process because the administrative work required to reach out, notify all those people and reschedule is too much. But if you have a VA, you can reach out and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling well today. I really need to rest. Can you coordinate the rescheduling of these five appointments? You know, that person, your VA should already have access to your calendar and all of that. So it makes it a little bit easier to make those decisions about doing what's best for you. You know, two things popped up into my head while you were speaking there. One is, you know, another thing that I sort of sometimes struggle with with VAs is, how do you know they're spending five hours on a project or two or one or 50? You know, that can be hard to judge sometimes. Um, and the second thing is, is security with uh, passports and passwords into uh, the back end of your website or, you know, um, your email list. You know, 
that's very important too. Yes. So there's great tools out there like LastPass, which Mm. allow you to share passwords with VAs where they can't see the password and you share it with them. So you can just as easily create a folder for things that you share with VAs and go in and delete that person's access if they're no longer working for you or you no longer want them to have access. So that's part of it. I also don't recommend giving your VA any financial responsibility until truly trust them, right? So we're not going to give them access to PayPal or business credit cards until you've had an opportunity to build up um, that trust. So that's definitely part of it. The other thing about working with VAs hourly, um, I like to get an expectation up front. When I give them a task, I say, hey, I'm thinking this is going to take two hours. Can you let me know if that's not reasonable? And that way they can come back and tell me, oh, you're way off. You know, this is, this is going to take 10 hours. Do you still want me to proceed? And that way I don't get a surprise invoice, but also so we have expectations at the outset. And my VAs are also trained to, when they hit whatever cap I've put on a project or mm-hmm. a cap that we've discussed, they'll come back to me and say, hey, I'm only halfway through. Did you want me to stop here or continue? That way that I can decide if it's a project that's worth pursuing or not. So uh, different people have different speeds. Asking upfront is one of the best ways to be clear about it. Love it, Laura. Laura, this has been an amazing conversation for anybody who's looking to scale their business. Uh, they want to do it with VAs. What's that one thing you want to let them know? Don't put off hiring a VA until it is too late. You do not have to commit to giving this person 10 hours of work a month or 10 hours of work a week. Start out with a small one-time project and build your way up from there. But don't put it off because you'll end up burned out and overwhelmed. Yeah, and then you quit. (laughs) (laughs) So Laura, uh, how do we find out more about you? You can check out my website, which is betterbizacademy.com. And what do you specialize in so people know? I have mostly help freelancers. I help people outsource to freelancers effectively, and I help freelancers grow and scale their business to make more money. Love it, Laura. Thank you for being here, and this has been amazing. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Remember to join us in the Private Financial Freedom Podcast Facebook group with me, your host, Lorna Poole. This is a safe haven of like-minded, wealth-getting go-getters who, like you, are on their journey to creating financial freedom in their life. This is where you and I can get intimate. Give, I can give you the support and guides to go from where you are now to where you want to be, developing your wealth mindset and creating your financial freedom life. Join at www.facebook.com slash groups, the financial freedom podcast. You will see the links to this on the website. It's in the show notes. Uh, or type it into the Facebook group. All you have to type in is Financial Freedom Podcast and you will see us there. Look forward to seeing you in the group. Take care. Thank you for joining us on the Financial Freedom Podcast to creating wealth, investing and developing your money mindset. To get started today on your journey, head on over to www.lornapool.com and grab your free course, Five steps to breaking free from your poverty mindset and accelerating your journey to financial freedom. See you there.